Good morning to you all. Today is Sunday, and um, I hope all of you are geared to worship our Lord. And uh, I encourage you to read the scriptures as well when you hear them or listen to the scriptures as they are being read so that you can follow the message. And I believe this message would encourage you, would help you, would do something in your life. And your life will never be the same when you listen to the message from God. God bless you. Let us pray. Come worship Jesus, the King of Kings. Prepare your minds. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your bodies to worship Jesus, the King of Kings, to receive his blessings. Come to us today, God of our waiting. Come to us with light. Speak to us today, God of our journey. Speak to us your truth. Dwell with us. God of our longing, dwell with us in love. Thank you, Father, as we come to you this morning. In your name I pray. Amen. This morning I will call Brother Benny to come and read the word of God from Matthew chapter 25. Verses 1 to 13. Good morning, everyone, and it's a great day to be here and read the Word of God to you guys. It's, uh, it's uh, the parable of the ten virgins, and uh, as Johnson mentioned, Matthew 25, 1 to 13. So at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom uh, was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us, both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went out with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Wow, what a powerful bit of scripture. All right, well, we'll get Johnson back up here to find out what his message is about this this week. And uh, yeah, welcome, Johnson. Thank you so much, Brother Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, you are the giver of each moment and each day. And you give us the opportunity to wait for the right time in which to discover more fully who you are, who we are, and how to receive you more deeply into our hearts. So we thank you for the waiting time. May it enrich, inspire, and grace our lives with wisdom, compassion, joy, and today and always. In your name, Amen. This morning, I've decided to share with you on the theme Your faith is your fuel. Your faith is your fuel. Ever have one of those days when things are hectic, 
You have time to think ahead to what's needed for the day and simply had to go forward with what you had. Maybe you forgot to finish your homework. Maybe if you have just been too busy and you just had to go with the minimum of what you have done, which you knew wasn't going to be sufficient. Maybe you forgot to do a needed report for work that was due that morning and were rushing to get to work only to, to forget your lunch and the gym clothes you needed afterwards. Maybe you procrastinated on a project and now you are just trying to do it at the last minute, lacking some of the material you really needed to make it work. Maybe you forgot about a large bill and didn't have the resources to cover it. Maybe you stayed up late the night before a breakfast and ended up sleeping right over it. If any of these scenarios make you cringe, you are not alone. All of us at one time or another have less business procrastination, or a simple lack of preparation foil us up and bring us down. In fact, this has become the normal way to a lot of people. We frequently run on empty, forgetting to fill our tank. We venture into the pathways of our lives, rolling over stones into the thickets and over potholes with no spare tire in the trunk, just hoping nothing will happen to jar our plans or to mess with our day. We are just hoping, say nothing will happen. Often we get away with it. But sooner or later we are going to hit a nail and our best laid plans will become void. It's the kind of unreal that we can be such risky averse people when it comes to change. And yet such risky bet heavy people when it comes to our long term well-being. But we do this in all aspects of our lives. Every day we do it. One of the most glaring ways we sabotage ourselves is by ignoring our spiritual well-being. Some of us are pretty good at taking care of our physical needs, our physical bodies. We eat very well. We sleep very well. But we forget our spiritual well-being. We eat well, sleep well, make sure we have proper exercise. In our culture today, taking care of our emotional health has become an important way to show we care about our relationships and our inner feelings which affect our behavior. But what about our spiritual wellness? We don't even talk about spiritual wellness, do we? We don't talk about anymore. And yet our spiritual well-being is intricately tied up with our physical and emotional health and wellness. When we feel spiritually fulfilled, awake to the world around us, our relationship with God, our recognition of the Holy Spirit divine presence in our lives, when we nurture our faith and take time for prayer, we feel we can face anything that comes our way, any adversity, any trouble, any surprise or a disaster. We are prepared for it. Nurturing our spiritual life is like putting fuel in our tank. Our faith is our backup resource in the event that none of our plans work out or of our tires blow out. Apparently, when it comes to our Christian lives, many of us are running on empty. The conviction, the confidence, and the passion we once had is running out. That's why you hear people saying, I'm no longer interested in religious things. I'm no longer interested in worshiping God because they've been running on empty for a long time. What we need is the fuel. When you add fuel, there is fresh energy and power. Fuel brings conviction, confidence, and growth. So faith and spiritual wellness is the fuel that lights up and keeps us going when things get tough. Our vision gets muck and life gets rough. It keeps us steady. It gives us clarity. 
It provides us with assurance. It allows us to keep seeing ahead through the mark and the mare so that we can keep going even when others stop because we have the fuel. Without it, we are always driving on empty. Jesus understood this about the human condition. We see this in the parable of the ten bridemaids. Jesus knew that men would get excited about their faith initially and would may be like the novelty of his message would engage with him in discipleship initially. But then they simply would dwindle. Their faith would dwindle. Like a flash in the pan, they would burn out and fall away, for they had nothing real inside to sustain them. No true faith to keep their commitment going. Their lives are not truly committed to a relationship with God, but to their own plans and agendas. We are always focusing on our plans and agendas rather than focusing on God. When the initial excitement dwindled and life set in, they simply were not prepared for the long haul that a life of discipleship can sometimes require. Their tanks were empty and devoid of commitment and sustaining faith. But Jesus also knew that some would understand. Some would take to heart his message to turn to God and to commit fully to following him like the other five men. He knew that some had the kind of faith that would bend brightly for a long time. Long time and would sustain them through and through adversity or time of waiting. So these people were not planners. The other five were not planners. They didn't bet their lives upon their own timetables, strategic plans or methods. But they prepared for Jesus coming with their hearts through a willingness to pray, wait, and count on God's presence and power with a faith that would never run dry. Jesus tells us in this parable today what it means to keep our tanks filled with life-sustaining faith, what it means to be ready for anything that life could throw on us, on our way. Keep awake, Jesus says, encourages us to be faithful and agent in our prayers, in our worship, in our discipleship, in our trust in God, and in him. So your faith will keep you ready for anything. Need to face, especially for Jesus' appearance in your life and in the world. So for you, never know when Jesus is going to come. The thing is, we don't know the date, we don't know the time, but our Lord is coming. He's coming soon. And we don't know it. For you never know when Jesus is coming to appear. Today, the world continues to surprise us with or caring that challenge us and challenge our church and our faith. Jesus invites us to face it with him. Think about the COVID-19, which has taught the whole world to a halt. Think about it. These are surprises we are finding. And I'm saying to you, our well, we were not even prepared for this. The world was not prepared for it. And that's why we are even asking questions. Is this thing going to stay with us forever or is it going to go away? We are not sure. Some time ago, I had the pleasure to officiate a wedding. And as I was with many weddings, it is a celebratory time. Everyone dresses for the party. They put on their best clothing and faces. They decorate the venue. They plan for every detail so as to make the occasion very perfect for a wedding. So the bride and the groom look beautiful and dapper. They look into each other's eyes with love and the thrill of the day. But it will only be in the long term that we can know the commitment and love in their hearts. It's not about the day, but it's now about the commitment they are going to move throughout. Every couple, at least most less day, is happy on their wedding day. <laughs> most of them are happy. Only some are still happy or in some cases more happy at their 25th wedding anniversary or maybe their 50th anniversary. That's when you say, yes, they've passed the challenge, if they are still happy. As Paul writes, faith and hope and love, these three abide to make what could be a simple flash in the pan infiltration of love into lasting, beautiful, exquisite, committed marriage between two flooded, exquisite individuals. So Paul reminds us that our marriage vows are based in the relationship we all have with Jesus Christ. 
Our faith, our love, our hope in Jesus Christ cannot be simply a mountain to moment or initial excitement for the novelty of a new church or a new kind of worship. But our relationship with Jesus needs to be a deep discipleship, discipline, experience with devotion, commitment, and faith that keeps refueling our tank for the long haul, for the long distance we are going to be taking. We are not sure how long it is, but we are prepared that we had enough fuel for the journey. For having a strong faith does not mean we will not face adversity, or will not disagree, or will not get angry, or will not feel sometimes that we are failing. But a strong faith means we will get through it all together with Jesus and with each other. We are able to move on. Stay strong. Stay the course. Your faith is your fuel. When we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, we are given a powerful resource from which to draw. The Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of Christ, will live inside of us and give us power for living. Why don't you pay attention to me? You don't have to face life powerless. That is what Jesus is saying. Why don't you pay attention to me? So Jesus is saying, I'm here to sustain you. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to empower you. Don't be afraid of releasing the power that lives within you. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't run from it. Surrender and embrace it. It's your destiny. It is part of your destiny. For it will lead you to that magnificent place where you can honestly say, it is not I who live, but Christ lives in me. And when you get to arrive there, watch out. When you unleash the power of Christ dwelling in you, watch out for amazing things will start to happen. They will happen from a Christian. They will happen for someone who has surrendered his life to Christ. You begin to do things you never thought you had the courage to do. You begin to influence people you never thought you could influence. You will be driven by a purpose larger than yourself. You begin to become the person that you and God wants you to be. In this time in which we are living, in a time such as this, it's more important than ever to rely on your faith. Our discipleship, our spiritual strength to get us through, but I have faith in you that you will put your faith in Jesus. And there you have enough fuel to carry you through and through all the challenges of life. I'm just urging you, brothers and sisters, Put your faith in Christ. He is the only one who can help you. He is the only one who can move you with you through these difficult times. When everyone is mourning, is crying over what is happening, you are able to move over because your faith is in Christ. Don't put your faith in people. Don't put your faith in things. Put your faith in Jesus Christ because he will never disappoint you. May the good Lord help you as you move on from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. God of all, for, of all forgive us when we expect others to bail us out because we've been foolish, complacent, or half-hearted. Forgive us, help us to prepare more thoroughly, think more deeply, and act more wisely. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I urge you to take your offering, to bring your offering so that I can pray for you. We always remember to thank God with our offerings. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with our offerings that we bring to you. We thank you for the life you've given us. We thank you that you always care for us. We thank you that you have given us the fuel that will never run out. And that is the Holy Spirit. We need to have faith in you, Father. May you continue, Lord, to Supply us with that which we need, faith in God.
For a miracle to happen in our lives, we need that faith. Bless this offering, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. May we receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.